do you know what's really cool? Um, no, a task profile I'm going to show you. Hey guys, my daily driver is Xiaomi Mi 11 pretty cool phone that I reviewed a couple of well, now months ago. You can watch it there. But today I want to talk about one of the updates that I've got long time ago. With a MIUI 12.5.3, I believe, I received an update which gave me a new alarm system. Now it's called weather alarm and in theory supposed to match the alarm tone to the weather outside, which is which is pretty cool. However, there are two problems with this. First, well, Xiaomi didn't really include any options, so there is no way of telling what ringtone is assigned to what weather outside, which obviously sucks. And I am in UK, so for the most part, I'm going to have whatever ringtone is assigned to it's raining outside, it's dark and gloomy. But just in case you don't live in a gay, I decided to have a live coding session and show you how it's done in two part series, one and a half hour each, which I'm gonna link in a corner as well. But it's fully understandable that you probably don't want to go through all of that unless you want to learn something new and going along with it and focus on this video instead. So now I'm going to show you my own interpretation of that Xiaomi weather alarm, thanks to Tasca. Imagine you waking up in the morning, it's raining outside and your alarm starts with raindrops and then gently blends into your favorite alarm tune. On a sunny day, raindrops are replaced with, let's say, birds chirping away. And if the meteor shower is in the forecast, threatening the whole humanity, then your alarm will turn into a theme song or theme tune from Armageddon to kickstart your heroic planet-saving efforts. I mean, that's awesome, but if you don't think so, there are also a couple of things that you're gonna learn along the way, so it might be worth sticking around. First of all, you're gonna learn how to use REST requests to interact with Open Weather API, just in case you fancy doing something else with the weather conditions. Next up, we have a JSON structured data. We're gonna explore how to take advantage of that and how to use that data in your task creations. Lastly, I'll show you how to query alarms, replace files, and a bonus how to mix up some sounds to make an awesome alarm tune. Just before we start, bear in mind this profile comes with some limitations. On my Xiaomi Mi 11 that comes with Xiaomi Clock, the Xiaomi Clock wasn't cooperative. I have a suspicion that it was caching the tune that was dropping into a directory, and when the tune was replaced with something else, it wasn't updating. However, that was promptly resolved by using Google Clock, the stock app. So if your alarm clock isn't working, just try Google app instead, and I think you should be good to go. As usual, guys, if you would like to take this tutorial at your own pace, in the description you'll also find a link to the written article with extra information, links, etc, etc. So go check it out after watching this video. My task with the alarm consists of three actions that are executed at midnight. First, I'm checking the weather to see what's going to be the weather like for the next couple of days. Then, I'm checking my phone to see if I have any alarms queued up. And lastly, I'll match all those details and try to assign correct uh, ringtone or alarm tone to the correct weather forecast for that time. That's pretty simple. So now I'm going to split that into three parts and explain everything step by step. And we're going to start with weather API. I already covered weather API in this profile if you want to create your own custom notification with a forecast, so you might as well jump in there and learn some more tricks. But uh, certain things has changed and now we have a different rest, so I'm gonna cover this anyway. In order to work with Open Weather API, you'll need an account. It's free, so don't worry about it. Create an account, get API key. Now you'll notice that as a part of a free account, you'll have access to a weather forecast in a three hour slots for the next four days. This is something that we're going to be getting from the server, splicing into bits and trying to use as our weather forecast. There are different ways you can obtain that forecast for your location. You can use a city, you can use zip code, or you can use a location data, mainly longitude and latitude. 
Now that can be either hard coded by you, like I will do in my part of the tutorial, or you can use actual uh, geolocation from Tasker to obtain those uh, values and substitute in a profile. I'll leave this to you. All we have to do really is just to make a REST HTTP request uh, to get that data. So check the URL I've provided and substitute your uh, location information, your API key, and then you can also add uh, the units you want to receive. I'm going to do it in metrics because, well, I'm in UK and I'm used to metrics. Your use case may vary. All that data downloaded from the server is available as a JSON structured information. So we're just going to store it in a WA current weather variable. Why WA? Well, I have a four tips to organize your task creations here. So read that if you're interested. Now that we have a complete forecast for the next four days stored, let's query the next alarm. Querying pending alarms can be done with a single action, but it's not as simple as you may think. By default, Tasker comes with enabled reliable alarms. What this feature does, it lets the Tasker secretly set alarm in the future and cancel it. It uses this alarm to keep accurately time and trigger your time events, so this is very useful. So obviously, if we're just going to query the next alarm, chances are we're going to run into that problem and we're going to read the alarm created by Tasker. To avoid this, we have additional action that we can use. We can disable that uh, reliable alarms and enable it once we query the alarms. So that's what I'm going to do and save that next alarm. It's provided in milliseconds from 1970 if you're interested, but we're going to divide this by 1000. Why? Because as you've seen in a weather report, those weather reports are actually stored and saved with the timestamps using seconds instead. So we need to make sure we have the same values or the same range of values. We have a weather forecast and we have our next alarm. It's time to figure out a clever way to match those together. Now I cornered myself in my live stream and I got to the point where I kind of knew what I needed to do, but I couldn't think of a solution. This is where I stopped the live stream, gave myself a couple of days and reached out to Zhao Diaz to get me a couple of tips and he had a very useful information that I wasn't aware of. JSON structured data is actually quite clever. If you have an array of information like we do, we have an array of three hour slots uh, with our forecast, you can use individual key value pairs in that array to create our mini arrays. It's a very useful feature for us to have because we can create a specific array which comes from list.dt. DT is where our timestamp is being held. Now that we have a list of just timestamp for the forecast, now that we have that array with timestamps, we can use a simple for loop to iterate through it and compare those values to the time of our next alarm. As soon as we're going to find a number which is bigger than our alarm, this is where we should stop and take a note of it. Why? Well, because we're going to need this figure to check what is the time slot prior to that. This is the time slot where our weather forecast is going to be accurate for our alarm. And we do that by keeping a track how many times we iterated and we were moving one. Once we extracted that index information, we can simply substitute it to wa current weather dot list uh, and an index value to get that forecast for our specific time frame that we are interested in. All right, we know now what is our forecast. It's time to mess around with some files. I used Zedge app to download a couple of ambient sounds and a couple of ringtones, I can mash them together. The process is quite simple. If you open Audacity or if you're lazy like me and open Premiere Pro, and then you can join the files, audio files together and ramp down the file with ambient sounds just before a main tune starts. This simple blending will give you a nice sounding ringtone, in my case with the sounds of rain, followed by the ringtone of my picking. The protocol is simple. Create as many alarms as you want. Each individual sound, name according to the weather condition. 
Now you might be thinking, where do I get that? Well, go to Open Weather API documentation and you'll have complete list of main events. Now you don't have to use main events. You can uh, use temperature values or you can use more accurate IDs to designate different ringtones depending on the weather outside. But in theory, we're gonna be picking the weather condition from the forecast match the file name in our folder and if there is no matching file name we're gonna play a default ringtone just in case you didn't think about having a tornado ringtone and one appeared around the corner so to finish up we have to have a task to replace our ringtone with something that we want so first create a folder and put all your assets in there including default ringtone then copy default ringtone out, so you could have a second copy in that folder as well, and put it in a location in which you're gonna use, use it for alarm sound. Once you've selected that as an alarm default sound, then you're ready for action. This profile will basically check the current weather condition assigned for that alarm time, then check through the files listed in a set assets folder, this profile basically will do that, will look at the current weather forecast for the time around your alarm. Now, once it knows the condition, it will look through the assets folder for a matching mp3 file. Now, once it got the mp3 file, it will change its name to the default alarm and replace the one in the directory that you're using to substitute your music for your uh, alarm sound. Now, if the condition isn't matched, then obviously a default alarm is grabbed and copied over, so that way your default theme is played instead. It's quite simple. This is one of the ways it all can play out. Obviously, you can make your own set of rules. You can take temperature in consideration or the wind speed. It's up to you. I mean, <laughs> it's task imagination is the limit. So if you fancy trying it out in the description, you'll find the link to the article and the article has the download to the file and a bit more about the project itself. So go and check it out. So now guys, well, that's, I think that's pretty much all. Let me know what you think about Tasker videos and Tasker live coding, especially give me a feedback on that and let me know whether I should prep for those or just dive in with just an idea and not clue how to solve it. I'll do whatever you fancy. Right, I'm gonna wrap it up by saying I do not have a posting schedule so you know how it works. Use the tools provided to get notifications. However, if you have a comment with a link, YouTube's gonna ban those and I can't restore those. So follow me on social media. And if you have something interesting to share, share it there so I could have access to it. Thanks so much for watching guys. Happy tasking and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.